guys, Jack Griffin here, and welcome to a new video. Uh, my video has uploaded today on my last one of oh, my last night's review of The Lost Lagoon, so go check that out if you haven't already. Um, but welcome to Sequest Beast Review Series 5, The Chaos Quadrant. And I'm, I'm, I'm recording this in the morning, so there you go, first morning video. First, first. Now, some things I want to clear up. Like I said, series three and four are two good series. Series five and series six, this is where we go back to the okay series. Basically, for series five, picture my thoughts on part one of the specials, but put them into four books. Put them into four four books. books. They're all okay beasts. It was a bit of an awkward series. But they're not really ones that really interest me. And only really out of all of them, only two of them really interested me. Me. Oh, and it's a shame because there's actually one of them I was looking forward to as well. Oh. But anyway, let's get into it. But just... Oh. Oh, it's, oh, it's raining. Okay. T just in time for a, a, a water advent adventure. But just before we do, don't forget to go check out Lucas Green, Adam Ferns and Year Unknown. They do great... Beast Quest content. Year Unknown has did, just did a live stream on Sequest content, so go check that out. That out. That. Oh. Um, and like in the future, I may do a live stream with him on ranking the Sequest Sequest books. So uh, I look forward to that. Probably this year. We don't have a date yet because, well, it depends when I get all the books. And and if you guys just wanted to know from the last video when I talked about Octor, I've read the first two chapters of Octor, so we're getting there. So, but without further ado, let's let's get started. So, I'm going to start off with the first first book. Um, I was going to say Simfid, but now I'm going to call him Sifid. I hope you don't mind. So, first book, Sifid the Spider Crab. Designer gave it a seven. I like its spikes along its back, the jaws, the little eyes it has, and the chainsaws. And its legs. And the spikes. Abilities I gave a six. Tough shell. Really agile. And has chainsaws. Yeah. And the fire I gave a six. I don't I don't remember much from it. I believe it took place in a cave. And basically you want to know what this story is about. I always like to share the plot. Just so you basically know a reason. So basically what, the plot. What, there's this pirate. Called Red Eye. Who's the villain for this series? Since Grow Up Blackheart is still still in the Lost Lagoon and the Professor is still in in prison, still in in prison. Oh, um, Roger's back, so we get to see Roger the pirate. He's in this series, and we also get to meet his daughter Grace. Now, you know, he doesn't really like Grace. She, he found her a bit annoying. I was actually okay with Grace. Um, oh, um. And, but I kind of think Red Eye or C Cyborg or Cyborg, as they come to later know is his name. And they forget calling him Red Eye, they just call him Cyborg instead. I'm going to call him Cyborg. Red Eye or Cyborg, I'm going to call him C Cyborg. Um, um, I find him to be an okay villain. I mean, there is one point when he did something really clever. But, like, he was just an awkward, okay villain. Yeah. Um, top place in the game. Grace, um, tried to do... Oh, yeah. The plot. Sorry, I forgot. So, the plot... The plot is basically... Um... What? Um... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it... And he's stolen... F this takes place in the Chaos Quadrant of Nemos. And he's stolen four precious Merin... Merin Art... Art... Artifacts. A spear. A breastplate. A coral sword. And a helmet. K which makes a full piece of armour. Which makes a full piece of armour. Apparently. Two weapons. And two pieces of armour. But apparently if anyone puts this on. They become really powerful. So that's why he wants it. And him... So Max, 
Leaf, Rivet, Spike, Roger, and um, Grace on apparently on um, Roger's pi pirate ship. On um, yeah. And Grace sets out to the get Chaos Quadrant on Roger's pirate ship, aka his submarine, his noble pirate ship. Um. Uh, and oh yeah, I, I, I just a small detail. I don't know why I'm saying this, but if you want to know what the brooch, what basically why why everyone was so inter interested in it in series four that Niobe had, apparently, I believe it can like snap people out of mind control or something like that. But I think that's it. Really, it's looking better. Sort of. Okay, but anyway. So, yeah, I can't remember much from it. Grace didn't really do much. I mean, she tried her best, but not really. And they did use the spear to defeat um, Symphid. Symphid. Um, all of these um, beasts are cyborg ones, so that means they are freed. No. Um, and, yeah, there's not really much to say about Symphid, honestly. Tried for Symphid, 19 out of 30. And the scores I give each of them are a bit, I just, I'm, oh yeah, before this review, I noticed something funny about the scores I gave them. Um, we'll, we'll leave it to the end, God. Um, like I said, total, 19 out of 30. A decent starter book. I feel like I did enjoy it, but I, out of all the starter books, oh, it's better than Shredder, but I wouldn't say it's better than Cephalox. Tet Rax, of course, and um, Rakar. Even though Rakar, yeah, Rakar got a higher score. Next one, which is the one I was looking forward to, but so many times in the sequels, there's books I look forward to, and they always end up being bad. But next one, Brox the Tusked Terror. Design, it's a walrus. Design, I gave a seven. I like the little whiskers it ha He has, like, the half skin that, like, just how big he is. Uh, you could say fat, but just look how big he is. His tusks and um, the metal looks pretty cool. Abilities, I gave a six. Sharp teeth. Can use his tail to swat things. Sharp tusks. Like I said, very agile in water. And that's about it. No. No. Lasers, no chainsaws like Siphon, no, um, no blades. No, no, okay, okay, nothing, okay. And a desert, but fire, I gave a five. The first fight, which was on a rocky island, now this, no, Siphon was the one to get the spear, this is the one to get the breast breastplate. Um, Brooks was one I was really looking forward to because it was a war. And um, they took place on a rocky island, 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 and I thought it was okay, but the final fight was short. It was like one chapter long. All he did it was calm Brooks down, and that just made him feel nice. I still do like Brooks, but not as much as I think so. And really sad because I really wanted more. It was really sad. Okay. And we actually get an emotional backstory on Brooks. Like, it was really cute. Yes, I said cute. cute. Tusked, tusked terror. <coughs> yeah. Oh, there's Brooks. Oh, I thought there was a bigger picture of Brooks. Yeah, I thought there'd be a picture of Brooks. But no, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And we get an emotional backstory on Brooks. How he was actually, he grew up in a tank, the cyborg, and he never knew his parents. So basically, he basically tortured him in such a small tank. 
and he never knew his parents. So we get an emotional backstory on the creatures he is. Because normally we just think of them as creatures. But Brooks actually got an emotional backstory, which I kind of like that. But apart from that, the fight was short. I don't really have any hope for him in Battle of the Beast. If he, if he can get to round two, that'd be lucky for him. But I still think he's just an okay book. Title for Brooks, 18 out of 30. It's an okay book. Um, I do like... I feel like the design is, is good. The fight was okay. And the abilities were probably the weakest thing about it. Because it doesn't really have... It's just your typical walrus. It doesn't really have... I would. I think it... Oh, yeah. And I believe it's... Things are metal. Oh, it, what are they being called? I feel like Brooks should have had some kind of blades on him. Like Ricard. Now, these two beasts are where they start getting better. And were the two that really sparked my, my interest. Oh. Next one is Venor the Sea Scorpion. And you and Lone House said, why is there a scorpion? Well, I actually did some research before, and guess what I found out? And I actually knew this even before you and Lone did this. Um, fun fact, um, there were actually giant sea scorpions in the time of the dinosaurs. So... Venom was basically an ancient creature brought back to life. So, design I gave an 8. This probably has the best design of series um, 5. I love, like, the tail with the spikes it has. Just its blue, black, glossy scales. It has its arm and its jaws. Looks menacing. Abilities I gave a 7. <laughs> um, armor, um, poisonous stinger. And I believe can shoot cannons. <laughs> Okay, and I believe it can, um, it, it has like, because it has like little claws and also sharp pincers and sharp teeth, it can grip onto stuff really agilely. So that's pretty good. In my community, it's a battle of the beast. I, I actually pictured him fighting Trag. He didn't come out on top, but who knows? If he does fight Trag, who knows what happens? Uh, and the fight I gave a seven, it was really good. And I didn't remember it being a lot then in Sifit and Brooks' his fight. It's a great book. It was a great fight. But I will be honest, I, j I need to know what happened to Sim Sifid. Like, the fight ends with Sifid falling into the ocean, and then it just says he they've, they've won. What happened? Did he... I thought Sif Venor died. Like, did I say Sifid before? Like, what happened to Venor? Like, d was he free? Did he die? What happened to Venor? Someone comment down below, or you're unknown, you're unknown if you had read this, and you do remember some. If you do remember it, you know, because he, he hasn't read them in a while. So, if he doesn't remember it, or anyone else and knows, or if anyone else knows, let me know down below. How, what happened to Venor? Like, did he, was he freed, or did he die? I'm not really sure. I, I'm going to guess he got freed, but because he lives at the bottom. And also, some of the pictures on the sequest books don't yet even happen. Like, this takes place in the ocean. You can tell because Leah isn't wearing her amphibio mask. mask. This never happened. They never even went below the water with Venor. But still, on it, about that, it's a great book. Total for Venor, 22 out of 30. Great book. Um, okay. It's a great book. Um, comparing it to the other third book, I'm not really ranking all of them, but because it's that good, com I only do ones that stand out. Comparing this to the f all the third books, I'd say it's tied with Manic. Better than Crusher. Better than Fenaria. But not as good as Horvoss. Actually, okay. Tied with Manic and tied with Horvoss. Now, getting on to the to the final book, Monoth the Spiked Destroyer. Design I gave a seven. I originally thought this was a, a swordfish, but it's a narwhal. And if you want to know your unknown, I do know what a narwhal is. It's a toothed whale. It's a species of whale. Um, and I just want to say, I actually thought this would be like a... If you've read series now, what, it was meant to be a like, friend um, thing. Like, I know Spike's there, but I thought this would be a swordfish, because Spike, so Spike fighting a, another version of him. 
And I thought he'd be like, oh, they're doing something referencing to Series 9 of Beast Quest. I'm not going to spoil it, but if, if you've read Series 9 and something to do with a friend and a beast, if you've read Series 9, you'll know what I'm talking, you'll know um, what I'm comparing it to and what I'm talking about. But no, it's a novel. But 7, I love the armour it has, the, the red mouth, the red eyes and the blue and like the beige underbelly. Pretty cool. Abilities, I gave a 6. Um, very agile in the water. Armour, sharp teeth, sharp, sharp like, I'm going to say that's a, a tusk. I'm going to say a tusk. Sharp tusk and it's, it's tusk can drill as well, but that's about it. But the fire gave a name, it involved coral giants, not Grundle, coral giants, to come out. I, I originally thought he was going to be like, oh my god. Because it said, and, oh yeah, so, th just want to say, Venom was for the coral sword, Monoth is for the helmet. And I believe they can also control the creatures of the sea. I was like, oh my god, we're going to get, like, Chakra, we're going to get Sifid, Brooks, and Venom coming to help. Or oh, if Venom was alive, that, of course. But no, we just get the Coral Giants. It was decent. I do remember enjoying this, and I actually really like Monoth. Um, Yerano put this third place in his ranking. His favourite was Venor, and his least favourite was Brooks. But I'll be honest, Monoth, I really enjoyed. And I think, so out of, with him and Venor, these were the two ones that, after I read Brooks and Sifid, I was like... Like, after I read it, these were the ones I were like, these were the best of series. Venor and Monoth were the best of series um, f five. But Monoth, we freed him, and we got all the stuff. But, however, we do reveal a secret, which I will tell you about later. Oh, and I was going to say something else later. What was I going to say? In all the hollow kaboo, I forgot what I was going to say earlier, because I swear I was, I was going to say something earlier. Hang on. Okay. I can't remember it, but I think it was along the lines of what I'm about to say, because it was actually in Venom, actually. But we do know a secret. And by the way, Cyborg, he does get away, but he does appear in Series 6. But Monoth is, is still a great book. Total for Monof twenty one out of thirty, a good finale to an okay series, and I would read it again. It's pretty good, but the 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 secret is, you know how the professor is Max's uncle. I'm just gonna say it. Cyborg is Max's cousin. His father is a professor, and basically, his backstory isn't all that good in my opinion it's okay so basically he had a falling out with his father and his father basically said he was useless yeah not really a great backstory i mean brooks's backstory was much more better than sybil's in my opinion but sybil is an okay villain and i might as well tell oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah I, I remember what i was gonna say earlier now it was a trick he did in venor Something put, and he also, throughout the series, he had these robots. He put a bomb onto Grace's leg, and he said, he said through the headphone thing, or a microphone, give me, because they, all the one, give me the breastplate, the spear, and the sword, and I'll let, it was like, give me the sword, the spear, and the breastplate, and I'll let her go. He did that, Max went and gave them to them as he, himself. The consequences if he didn't, he because that bomb's connected to him, he'd blow up Grace and basically blow up the whole bit of he'd kill them all. But surprise, with a plot twist, because Max didn't really trust him, but with a plot twist, turns out the bomb was a fake and they've just given him the tool, the artifacts. So, so now he's got them. So now he's basically indestructible. But, of course, in Monoth, they get him back. Happy ending. There we go. But if you want to know the similarity... All of these Series 5 had the same scores as Series 1. I'm not joking. 
This is the script. I don't care if it's like half piece of paper. And I also have a new script, which is a giant piece of paper, which is a bit irritating, but I'm trying my best to do it. In the original review, I gave Cephalox a 19. Sifid, a 19. Silda, an 18. Brooks, an 18. And Maddox did get a 21. And 21 was Monof score, but just switched around. So, and Crayo got 22, which was Venor's score. So, if you just switch them around, but all of them got, got, but the scores were the same as Series 1's. So, with that being said, I don't even, I didn't even need to go on Google. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't even need to go on Google cal Calculate to work out the total. Because I could already clarify that the total for Series 5, the Chaos Quadrant, is 80 out of 120. It's tied with Series 1, honestly. Oh. Um, better than Series 2. But I wouldn't say as good as Series 3 or 4. Okay. And with that being said, time to get on to the ranking. And you're not going to, to believe this, but you're not going to believe the order they're in. And even though he has got one point higher than Brooks, I'm putting him here because I do feel like he is my least favourite. So least favourite of Series 5 is Sifid the Spider Droid. Even though I'm getting a higher score than Brooks, I feel, do feel like out of all of them, he was the weakest. His, his design is... In my opinion, if I had to compare designs, yeah, Brooks probably had the weakest design. Sifid probably had the second best. Oh, Sifid. Oh, 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 right. Sifid probably had the second best design of the series, which is something really good. And I look f now. I don't know how he's going to do in Battle of the Beast. I kind of want him to go up against Nephro, because I have a good idea for that battle. But I don't know, because Pacific is my least favourite. Third place is Brooks the Tusked Terror. A really short fight. I was really looking forward to this. But the abilities are bland, the fight was short, and the design was probably the best thing about it. The backstory of him doesn't really help him, even though I do like it. But aside from that... There's not really much to say. And I kind and honestly, Brooks, if he can get to round two, he'll be lucky. Second place, my top two, second place is Venor the Sea Scorpion. Surprisingly, being the high score of the series, it's got pretty good. The design is probably the best of the series. Abilities are probably the best of the series, which the, all of them got a six for abilities. And the fight was the sec out uh, next to Monos, the second best fight of, of the entire series. Venor, I think, unless he goes up against something really powerful, really bulky, and really big compared to him, I feel like he has a good chance of getting to round two, maybe even getting to round three. So, Venor, I look forward to using his abilities. I do have to rush a bit. But, my favourite beast of Series 5 is Monoth the Spiked Destroyer. Probably having the third best design of the series. The fight was great. The fight, it's a great finale. It's the 20th book. So, there you go. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh. Oh, oh. Good to see a narwhal beast. I really like this book. I think it'll be my favourite for a long time. It may get... Venor might beat it someday, but I don't really, really know. The abilities are the weakest thing about Monoth, however. But I do think the design was pretty good, and the fight was a good um, final showdown. Although it would have been better if it had the other three beasts. So then we could have two all-beast battles. So that is pretty good. And with that being said, that was my series five review. If you like what you saw, 
leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that notification bell down below, below. and don't forget to subscribe to your unknown Adam Ferns and Lucas Lucas Green. L Lucas Lucas Green. Go watch your unknowns' Sequest live stream. I look forward to um, collaborating with him in the future. And um, hopefully, I don't know when the next video will be. But until then, then I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.